Hello, once again, my wonderful infinitesimal audience. It is I, Lim Legion, Reddit's favorite, downvote extraordinaire, hilariously inept ex-competitive player, and the ever-living bastion of truth. I'm here once again to give you my thoughts on the state of a game I actually haven't really been playing that much until quite recently, due to quarantine. I've chimed in here and there, but I've always kept a close eye on the progress of the game, because, well deep down in my barbed wire wrapped heart made out of the blackest ice and coal, I still hold this game pretty close to my heart and ultimately hope the best for it, as I believe this game could be truly great. Eventually. This brings me to the point of this video. The longer I see the progress of this game, the more I realize how accurate the phrase one step forward, two steps back is in regard to the way this game has been balanced, patched, and overall designed. I'm attempting to make this slightly more professional of a video than my previous For Honor videos, but you'll have to keep in mind that until I get around to upgrading my PC, my footage is pretty janky, and also why I'm playing the mode I hate the most in this game, duels. My frame rate wouldn't forgive me if I played fools. You might have guessed based on the character we are seeing first, I want to talk about Hitokiri. I made a post recently on Competitive For Honor about my feelings on the topic, so I'll basically just go over them here. Plenty of people seem to share my views on the laughable, if not abysmal, changes being made to the character, so I'm surprisingly not alone, which just makes the result of the changes and the reasons behind them even more confusing and disappointing. Itakiri's nerf on their uncharged opener heavy hyper armor, otherwise known as the complete removal of it, reeks of reddit tier balancing decisions. I still don't quite get it, as far as I was led to believe, while Hito was still complained about by non-bash based offense character mains, Hito seemed pretty much fine to me. Once heavy on red was taken care of quite quickly, the character just seemed fine. I never really thought that they as a character were broken or overpowered once they actually nerfed them, but I did understand why people decide playing against them. Hito became a surprise favorite character for me in my various returns to this game, so it's somewhat saddening to see the character's identity being essentially ripped away from them due to a poor balancing decision. Hito honestly needed minimal tweaks in my eyes, enough to minimize the frustration of playing against her and to give Hito players more freedom and ways to express skill. Now, however you manage to accomplish this in a game as shallow as this one, where people think dodging into attacks to deflect them is the epitome of skill, I have absolutely no idea, but I'm more than welcoming to any ideas anybody actually would have. I'm not entirely sure exactly how badly this will hit Hidokiri in terms of strength, but the response by the community has mostly been the collective cry of what the fuck with the odd LOL GOOD outliers sitting there. I'm actually surprised how many people hate the changes being proposed. Obviously, there are more than just the stripping of her intended design, but they're not as big, they're just kind of salt on the wound. Related to that, I'm branching on from Hitokiri specifically, is how much I dislike the way that feats are balanced. Classically, For Honor Balance has basically been seeing a feat that's too good, absolutely nuking it from orbit, exterminatus style, but then not touching any other feats that badly need looks at, buffs or nerfs respectively, depending on what feats you're specifically talking about. Currently there are feats that are absurd. <laughs> that's that's the, probably the most accurate way I can refer to them. Spear Storm, Fire Flask, Smoke Bomb, Umbral Shelter, Second Wind is somehow still ridiculous, arguably Stalwart Banner, Lawbringers, Bombs, etc, etc. I can keep going, but these are the ones that stand out the most and they have been utterly untouched. Meanwhile, these feats exist in the game as Centurion's March. By far the most ludicrously terrible feat in the game that I still just cannot possibly wrap my head around why it exists, it's that terrible. Basically, no progress has been made here since I last played, which as far as I remember was when sharpened blades and other similar feats were gutted, Soothing Mist was obliterated, Heal on Block was nerfed pretty hard, and so on. Also, traps got nerfed sort of hard, in the sense that they can't be made invisible via bullshit anymore, and they can't really be stacked by one player anymore. As far as I know, at least. So, that's what happened while I was gone, from what I've noticed. The Centurion rework is pretty decent looking on paper. I cannot say for sure how good he'll be, but I mean, from the looks of it, he can 
attack now, you aren't solely relegated to a staring contest anymore? That's good in my book. More characters need offense. The entire game needs to be balanced towards offense. Thank you. Of course, provided his offense is actually good. Hoping for the best would just be silly at this point. <laughs> Lawbringer is, uh, still ridiculous. They're nerfing him by, like, 10 health. Great! Can we nerf his punishes, defense as a whole, make shove punishable on prediction or reaction by characters who are equipped to reaction punish prediction or punishable bashes, but give him far greater offensive prowess to compensate? Please? In fact, more compensation for nerfed characters as a whole? Anybody can play Lawbringer, even me, and my reactions have basically dropped off a cliff, as well as my desire to really show off. I'm not particularly interested in being super good at this game anymore, and I can just pick Lawbringer and Dominion with friends and basically win off of this choice alone. I can block, parry, and hit people with guaranteed punishes. GG. Good design, Ubert Soft. While we're on the topic, and I know testing grounds changes mostly, looked at damage values, except apparently Shaman's Bleed randomly doing 18,000 billion damage for some reason. What the fuck, Ubisoft? <laughs> but damage is a huge problem in this game. Light parry damage is still far too high for most of the old characters. Some characters have damage spreads that are flat out illogical, such as Jormungandr, who goes from doing reasonably okay damage to a 50 fucking damage. Lawbringer's punishes are real, apparently. Highlander still has a dodge punish for 40 damage, as well as generally high damage. Arabusha. Kensei's damage is still too high on some moves, but the rest are mostly fine. I don't think Kensei needs direct changes, just the testing grounds broad strokes changes are probably enough for him based on what I've seen. I don't really need to make suggestions here, honestly, as most of them have already been made, but no light parry punish specifically should ever be higher than 35. Most of the new characters generally have much lower damage than the old cast, in particular characters like Zahn or Hidakiri, who generally don't do too much damage outside of their biggest moves, which in the case of Hito happens to be a 1,500 or 1,400 MS unblockable heavy that does 40 damage. This is fine. BP's damage is also pretty much there on the money. Not too much to say about him, really. I don't dislike Black Prior in any capacity, and I think he's the gold standard that characters should be balanced around, ideally. It's just a shame that that's currently not how the game is. Uh, another thing, I guess, is Warden's back dodge shoulder bash still needs to be removed. Otherwise, if Warden is to remain the way he is, he's perfectly fine. Just no more 40 damage on fully charged bash and light parry, please. That's it. 35 is enough. Revenge is still a horrible mechanic. I hate it. I was okay with it before they gave it the buffs that led to its still current iteration. And it won't be fixed with testing grounds changes based on what we knew of when they were being tested. Bashes and GB still feed the same revenge there, but damage feeds less due to the adjusted damage as a whole. If Healing feats and Jormungandr and Lawbringer can still stall as hard as they do on live as the future iteration of the game. Revenge will continue to be a problem in uncoordinated play and will be equally as annoying in competitive play, though the competitive frustration is for different reasons altogether. We still have no way to tell how much revenge somebody has until it's too late. It's a guessing game in itself. In a gank, the person helping the main player performing the gank has to wait about 5 seconds for revenge tags to expire and then start attacking again if they want to minimize the risk of granting revenge. But this means the gank will take longer, which promotes passive stalling play, which isn't good. Ganking remains by far the highest skill ceiling in the game in terms of macro play, as you have so many factors to consider that are either incredibly poorly communicated like revenge or like with most other games natural issues such as the positioning of yourself and the enemy team. That's fine. The revenge issue, however, merely exacerbates the frustration. An external indicator, some minor nurse to revenge in the form of revenge gain, maybe the buffs that revenge gives, would be welcome changes from my perspective as a former competitive player and current matchmaking terrorist. Generally, the more I play this game, the more disappointed I get. It is riddled with inconsistency. Walls straight up get you killed if your attack happens to coexist in the same universe as them, but then they sometimes ignore the walls completely, and it does not. 
feel good to win it all if somebody bounces off a wall and grants you a free heavy on them. It feels cheap. And while I don't hate ledging on principle as I play Soul Calibur, and don't get me started on my problems with Soul Calibur 6, please god don't do it, I do hate how prevalent ledging is. Even whilst they're being slowly excised from maps as the game gets older, situational awareness doesn't matter when some characters just put you into an instant death situation while others don't have the same capacity to do so. It reeks of poor asymmetric balancing choices. I'd rather the entire ledging issue be relegated to either the most minimum possible scenarios or just completely removed as it is incredibly frustrating in this game as a whole. Not to mention inconsistent as well as I have both ledged people who have proceeded to get the fuck up and murder me or been ledged and then just mysteriously walked away like nothing happened. It's pretty questionable. I know deep in my heart that one day there will come a time where I feel good playing this game for a while again. I missed playing the testing grounds changes completely, but I've heard so many positives about them from pretty much everybody I've talked to. Obviously there are some people who weren't as big of fans, mostly console players, and I understand that. But making combat less about delaying your inputs to actually hit people, therefore lowering the skill floor of being able to attack damage, tuning overall, faster paced combat, less out of stamina focus, which generally improves the flow of the game as a whole, so on and so forth. This is good to have in the game, which we will be getting in August the 2nd. Yeah, let, let's talk about that. I fully believe that SARS-CoV-2 is the main reason behind the initial TG changes being delayed. I know the Ferrano team isn't a huge Ubisoft moneymaker, I know they're a smaller team than usual for most AAA titles, and I know how badly this pandemic affected the whole world, some places significantly worse than others. But now, now that things are slowly getting better for the most part, I'm left with questions. Is the longer delay than anticipated going to be because there is more fine-tuning being done? Is there even more that we don't know about that's coming? The hero being delayed sort of hints at this, and I'd like to see what we get. I don't mind too much that there is yet another delay. I'm not that ridiculous, not like the people complaining about the Black Lives Matter movement delaying the fucking warriors then. How degenerate are you people? It just leaves me cautiously optimistic. I just hope that when we do actually get these changes, there will be far more bang for our buck included within, as I dearly want this game to be like the game I paid for all those years ago. I want dearly to be that starry-eyed idiot thinking how cool this game is, how unbelievably unique it is, and enjoy every single fight no matter what happens in it like I used to when this game first came out, before I realised how stale it was. I want to play characters like Berserker, Hirochi, Centurion, and all the characters I've put legitimately hundreds, if not potentially thousands of hours into playing, and feel like it's a completely new experience to me. But currently I can't really do that. The game just doesn't change at a fast enough pace, and the changes we do see are usually not really worth talking about. I believe in this game despite everything. I really do, and I hope for the best, but until it just starts becoming three steps forward, it probably won't happen anytime soon. I'm Lim Legion, stay safe out there, and have a wonderful day.